Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lana. Today I am bringing you a book haul, a very big book haul. Some of these include books that were, you know, gifts for New Year's. Um, some of these were gifts that I gifted to my sister, which were books that she already read and she gave to me. So it's like, it's a lot of books. I just pulled this whole stack off the shelves. So it's in no particular order, but I'm gonna start with a book that I'm reading right now, and that is The Hobbit. I did show this book in one of my videos. I don't remember which, but I'm pretty sure I never mentioned it in a haul. This is a beautiful edition of The Hobbit. It has um, the Alan Lee illustrations. They are, let me find them. Uh. They are full color with these like glossy pages throughout the whole book. Absolutely gorgeous, wonderful, yeah. This is technically a reread because I have read The Hobbit when I was very young, like nine or something. And as you may know from my 2023 reading plans video, I am planning to do another reread of The Lord of the Rings this year. So I started to start with The Hobbit as like a pre prelude, prelude, prelude mm, to start me on that journey. And the sun has decided to come out. It always comes out when it's not convenient for me. Oh. Anyway, I'm a little over halfway done with this book. It's an adventure of a hobbit with a bunch of dwarves, dwarfs. There is a dragon. There are many, many things that happen. Adventures, elves, goblins, magic. <laughs> it's Tolkien. It's amazing. Then I finally got Dark Cries by C.S. Picot. So I love C.S. Picot. I read her Captive Prince trilogy and short stories and uh, she's also the writer of uh, the Fence comics, which are about fencing, which I really enjoy. I really like her writing and this is a start of a new, I think it's a trilogy, a YA fantasy trilogy. Um, I don't really read YA anymore but because it's her <laughs> and uh, as I said, I really like her writing. I like the themes that she brings up and I've already read it as you can see by all the tabs. I think this is set in the late 1800s? No, early 1800s. It's 1821 uh, London. This is a world where a very, very long time ago there was magic. It was like the ancient world, but at this point humanity forgot basically about that world, forgot about the magic. There are like some remnants of uh, magical artifacts and castles and like magical pieces of that world that are still around. But uh, if you don't know what it is, you don't know what it is. And a long, 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 long time ago, there was this battle between the Dark King who wanted to basically end humanity and bring the world into darkness and uh, the light side, which was, um, was the lady, she was the representative of the light and uh, the light won. And this story, the descendants of that dark king are trying to bring him back. So we are in London in a world where for most people it's a, it's just it's just London. It's a normal world, they have no idea about magic. So we are following Will, who in the beginning has no idea about any of all of this. And one night his mother gets killed and he's has been on the run ever since. He doesn't know why she's been killed, why they were targeted at all. He's just living his life, keeping his head low, uh, trying not to bring any attention to himself in case there's danger around. Again, he doesn't know why his family was targeted. And then he meets an old servant of his mom who tells him to find the stewards, the fighters for the light, that they will have answers for him. And he has no idea what that means until he stumbles upon the stewards. So the thing I really loved in Captive Prince um, and what I expected in this one as well are many twists. She likes a twist. She likes to show you something, make you, you know, do your own assumptions about what's gonna happen, what could this mean, and then like turns everything around. She does that very well, and there were a lot of twists in this book that I absolutely did not see coming till the very end. She just kept surprising me page after page. 
Um, uh, our main character is also bisexual, which is a great rap to see. But unfortunately, this book was just not for me. I'm not sure what exactly didn't work for me. It was a little too complex. You do get a sense by the end that, oh, there's like a lot more that needs to happen and we need to uncover. There are like a lot of questions by the end, but instead of making me want to read on and oh, I can't wait for the next book, I was just, I just felt very tired by the end. I was just tired. I wanted like a simple answer to at least like one of my questions. <laughs> Not everything had to be this complex. I mean, overall, I think it's a great book. I gave it three stars, but it was just, a, it was a, a bit too much for me. I am not sure I'm gonna pick up the next book. Uh, it's not out yet, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I wanna continue on. Um, there are so many like great, like incredible things in this book, but do I want to continue is, you know what, I will get to that decision when I get to it. Next book I have here is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Ling Tan. This was a book I was gifted for the New Year's. What happened was two days or a day before the New Year, my sister and I were watching a Books and Lala video together and she was talking about this duology and talking about these books and we were both like, <gasps> I will. Like, oh, I want to read that book. She's like, yeah, I want to. Like, do you want it for New Year? I was like, yes. So she gave it to me. Um, that was the end of my interaction <laughs> with the book. Since then, my sister already read both this and the sequel to it. So she like finished the duology already. Uh, has many opinions and thoughts, and is very upset that I'm taking so long to read. It. All I know is that it's a myth retelling, that there is magic, there is a quest, adventure, there is love. My sister kept saying that it has like a very fairy tale vibe to it as you're reading it. Like it feels like you're reading a fairy tale. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited to have it and I do want to read it sooner rather than later, but we will see. Then I have the complete trilogy of Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I'm pretty sure I hauled this one before, but since then, the other two books of the trilogy have joined the first one. These actually were books that I gifted to my sister for the new year. And again, she already finished this whole trilogy and I'm, I'm still here. This is a very popular YA murder mystery. Actually, from what I've heard, this is a murder mystery and this is more like thriller it goes away a little from the mystery genre from what i've heard but it's mixed media it's very popular and beloved and again my sister had a lot of opinions and thoughts about it so when i do get to it i'm sure we'll have a lot of things to talk about then there is a book i'm sure you've heard of it's the atlas six by olivia blake this is a dark academia fantasy novel uh, that has a competition within it. It's, uh, I believe, six magicians that have to compete for a spot at the elite Alexandrian society, right? Kept going back and forth between like being very excited for this book and being not sure because some people like really love this book and others don't. And what really sold me on this was Leanne's review. Uh, she did say that like all the characters here are terrible. They're not likable, <laughs> not a single one of them. The writing is very pretentious. It's very like dark academia, we're gonna get pretentious. And those things are not scaring me off. And in fact, I'm glad to know this beforehand so I'm not starting this book with wrong expectations. But I mean, from the first time that I read the synopsis of this book, I've been so intrigued. Sounds like a book that I would really enjoy, so hopefully it is. <laughs> and next, I have some books that I bought secondhand. First, we have Sleep No More by P.D. James. Uh, this one was featured in one of my TBR Finds videos uh, where I mentioned that if I were to pick up a short story collection, it would be about murder. <laughs> like a murder mystery short story collection, which this is. Earlier this year I read the second book in the Marvel series by Agatha Christie, The 13 Problems, and that book is structured kind of like a short story collection because it doesn't have like an overall plot line. It features 13 separate 
mysteries that the characters are discussing and trying to um, resolve, not resolve, trying to solve. I really enjoyed that book and I really enjoyed that format of those like little mysteries. So I have high hopes for this one. I've heard amazing things about P.D. James as a mystery writer. I am excited about this. So this has six stories. Um, and as the murderer's tales unfold, the dark motive of revenge is revealed at the heart of each. Since I've already mentioned Marvel, I'm trying to read the Marvel books in order. So I already read the first two books. So the next book in that series would be The Body in the Library, which I've not found yet secondhand. Uh, after that, there's The Moving Finger, which again, I've not found secondhand, but <laughs> I came across a murder is announced, which is the fifth book in that series. Bought it online and no one told me that there are like markings in the book. There are things written, things underlined, highlighted. I mean, this was so cheap that I don't care, but it would have been nice to know that, you know, before buying. Um, either way, I will get to this book eventually. I'm definitely, for now, not buying anything beyond this fifth book uh, before I read the next three. Uh, but I'm glad to have this one and yeah. <laughs> next is a book that I was considering to read for my... October Halloween scary ghost creepy books I forgot how I started that sentence <laughs> I didn't end up reading this book in October but I'm still very interested in it um, and now that I have it physically I might actually read it this year and that is Slate House by da David Mitchell uh, author of Cloud Atlas and uh, I'm pretty sure this book is in the same universe as Cloud Atlas but you don't have to read them together I've not read Cloud Atlas so it's fine there is this mysterious door that appears in a dark alley every oh, my eyes are just not okay today it appears every I think like nine years and uh, in each part or chapter you follow a person finding that door and going in and what happens to them inside Slate House. So all the like parts or chapters, I don't know how to properly call them, are like separate stories that follow different characters, but all within Slate House, connected to Slate House. And they're all nine years apart. I think it's nine years. It begins in 1979 and comes to its turbulent conclusion around Halloween 2015. Yes, every nine years, last Saturday of October, a guest is summoned to Slate House. But why has that person been chosen? By whom and for what purpose? Creepy and fun. Does anyone else have like eyes that cry all the time like mine? <laughs> I'm not a very emotional person, like I don't cry that much, but my eyes cry almost every single day because they're so sensitive to light and wind and temperature and everything. You never know when. I might start crying. <laughs> and the last book I'm so excited to tell you about. Uh, this is The Labyrinth of the Spirits by Carlos Riza Fun. Oh, now you just can't see me. Hello. Let's move away from the sun. Apart from the book itself, I'm also very excited to have found secondhand this like large paperback. And ah. Oh, uh, so I read The Shadow of the Wind by this author a very long time ago. I just remember that it was during a vacation. I found this in the in the hotel library. Someone left it and I just picked it up and read it. And I remember thinking that I think I might be too young for this book, but I absolutely adored it. And The Shadow in the Wind is set in Barcelona and has to do with the Second World War. That's all I remember that it has to do with a book. It's Barcelona and there's a war. <laughs> that's, that's all I remember. But uh, I do remember that I absolutely loved the writing, being very invested in the characters and really feeling like I was in Barcelona in the 40s. Um, so I'm very excited about this one. Also, my good friend Vanya has read this and uh, really loved it and has been talking about this a lot. So I feel like this will be a good time. Let's see what this is about. So this book, it's very heavy that this is about a young man in Barcelona in the 50s who owns or runs uh, I guess both a bookshop 
and uh, lives with his wife and son and uh, the mystery that plagues his life is the mystery behind his mother's death and just when he is close to solving this enigma a conspiracy more sinister than he could have imagined spreads its tentacles from the hellish regime that is when Alicia Gris appears a soul born out of the nightmare of the war she is the one who will lead Daniel to the edge of the abyss and reveal the secret history of his family although at a terrifying price <laughs> sounds like a fun long historical fiction with a mystery which is what i love this is the biggest haul i've ever done on my channel uh i don't plan to continue this way <laughs> i have more than enough books to read um i'm actually like at a good reading pace right now um i'm pretty like in a good place with all my reading challenges for the year um i will do an update for that probably in summer so i do believe that most of these books will be read by the end of the year so yeah there's also a book that i ordered myself as a present again for new years that hasn't arrived yet because that's how long it takes it should get here by the end of february anyway let me know out of all these books which book you're most excited for me to read uh which one you've read and would recommend or maybe you read and you hate it okay, let me know your thoughts and if you made it this far leave me a star emoji to let me know you were here and have a great rest of your day and i will see you in my next video bye